Hey guys, welcome to Jury's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and we are back in the studio. Social distancing, properly, but we're here. Uh, we have, uh, we're an hour early today, and I appreciate you guys being cool with that. My youngest child, Elam Dean, is going to graduate from high school today in a tiny macro mini celebration that where they're filming them all and then they're going to splice it all together as if it was a real ceremony. So, um, so I appreciate everybody being cool about us being able to get this done so I can get there in time to be there for that. Um, today's episode is JL153. That is keyword JL153. If you're interested in looking at any of the products from this episode, you're going to go to the jerrysartorama.com website. You're going to, in the search box, type that keyword in, JL153, and it's going to pull up this kit. And this kit is right around $20 for everything. That includes um, a Mongeo Soft Pastels set of 32 little half sticks. It, it looks like this. This one's been used because we did this in one of the at-home episodes and everybody loved it so much, I promised we would do this again so people could get their money's worth out of their kit. So it's that kit, gives you 32 colors. There is a handy dandy little gray squishy eraser. I don't like those. Touching them, touching them, sticky. Sorry. Um, then we've got the Creative Mark blending kit. It's got your sanding pad. It's got all sorts of delightful stumps, stumps and tortillions, and two count them two makeup brushes uh, that work great. It's like a little sponge applicator to be able to apply small bits of color or blend very softly and very gently. Um, and also they've got scraper ends, so that's cool for trying to even pull something off that you, you need to get off of your artwork. So the artwork we did last time in an hour was a pair. I didn't feel like we did that bad for it. And this has gotten a little darker because I did put some fixative on it because it was windy and I did not want it blowing anywhere <laughs> to come in. So, um, and I didn't have pastel fixative. The sprayer had gone bad apparently. So, so this is workable fixative. So still nice and bright colors, which with lower quality pastels, those go away. So that it maintained the color is pretty cool. Um, we are using the Fabriano Tizano shades of paper. Um, it gives you 12 assorted colors. On the show before, we've used a lot of the Cans and My Teints because they have a pad of it. Um, fa the Fabriano is almost exactly alike. It's got a more textured side. It's uh, just slight texture on the other side. It's got all the cool colors, but to get them in the larger you know, things, you order in the packs. So, so this is a fantastic way of seeing what some of the colors look like firsthand, being able to use them. Um, this kit for everything gives you that uh, the 12 sheets of different colors to be able to play with so it's a fantastic little starter set for if you're not sure if you want to try pastels um, if you just want to dabble some if you've got uh, kids in the house even it's non-toxic so it's fantastic for everybody to get out and have a go with so that's what we're using today the tomato we are going to do the tomato when we did an oil pastel episode at home. Everybody, uh, we, we, and everybody's on the fence. It was the tomato or the, um, what was it? Cantaloupe, right? Um, they, they couldn't decide. So we want cantaloupe promised that at some point we would pull that tomato out. So ta-da, it's the tomato. I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that, but that's okay. Cause that's what we're here to do is push you and, and try some new things. So, um, if you didn't see our at-home episode, we're going to very quickly go over this so that you know um, kind of what the deal is. Now, drawing board, you can use an easel. For pastels, you usually want to tilt it slightly forward so that as you're working, that dust falls off. So at times, Amy is going to blow in the artwork to get the dust off. Don't do as Amy shows you. Do as Amy says, which tilt it forward if you've got that ability. If not... Obviously, you're going to be cleaning your workspace right afterwards. So um, it, it's just for, for this type of work up here, it's easier for me to use this drawing board and for you guys to see. So um, 
to look at our tomato, if you can show that side camera for me, Katie, I've got a bunch of the different papers and we did this at home last time. So here's our set of, of 12 papers. So we're going to look at some different colors. It's good to match the colors with something that you're going to be doing. So we've got this really bright tomato. Now this one could work. Um, you can really see it's got some of those kind of almost matches the yellow of the seed, doesn't it? So that would give you a way to have some of that color already there to use. Um, and then the red would go over it. Not not a bad choice if that's what you'd, you'd like to do. Uh, I, there's another color in there that I like, so I'm going to do that instead. Um, this would not be bad either. It's It's slightly darker, but in some of these areas in here, it's just a slightly, that's a slightly darker value than this. So again, the bright colors would pop really nicely on it. Uh, it's neutral enough where, where that would be, you know, good. This would even work too. Your darkest darks in there are just slightly darker than the value of this paper. Bright colors really pop on dark paper. So this would still be a way to do that that would give you kind of some nice contrast. Green, obviously. Now, if you were really wanting to make this light up, like a proverbial Christmas tree. Red on that green is going to scream brilliance. So if you wanted to have a little fun and make something almost kind of in your face, focus pop art, just wild, you could choose a paper like that. Um, blue, using this blue is probably going to make anything that's not really red, red, super orange. So probably one to stay away from. Uh, the same with kind of more of this kind of cobalty blue, anything that's got any kind of uh, violets or kind of magenta, that kind of thing, it's going to make it look a lot more purpley because of how this is kind of a warm, kind of a reddish blue blue. So probably not the best choice. Yellow, this would work. Uh, it might make your reds look really dark because it's pretty bright. Orange, the orange would work for that. We did the pear on the orange because we wanted to talk about those complementary colors uh, with the blue that we were putting on top of it. So I don't think I want to use the same color that we used, although that would be kind of a nice choice. There's a red. I'm kind of thinking we might try the red. It just... Interesting. It's, it's, it's fiery. It speaks to me today. Uh, we have a lovely lavender. I, not with the red. Maybe if it was a, a yellowy fruit, yeah. even even an orange or kumquat, I don't know. Black, that I, again, that would work. It would really be a nice kind of screaming color on top of it. But everything would be, you know, you'd have really dark pops of color. You don't have anything that dark of a value. This would even be nice. This wine color, that would even uh, be nice. And I was actually, that was what I was thinking of going with. But, because, you know, look how nice that looks with that. Kind of background there. It matches that background really well, actually. But this is this seems like the this could be kind of a challenge. I think I think I think I want a little bit of a challenge. We're we're gonna try something. Um, I always play it safe, right? Or I, maybe not as safe, but I think this is pushing it a little for me. So, uh, so let's let's select that red. If you at home, and and we and we said this when we did it before. Feel free to use what color that speaks to you. What color you think that you, you know, might want to use. Even if you say you've got some colored paper at home, you didn't get this kit. Um, let's check the paper texture. I think that's the more textured side. Uh, but you've got some tinted paper, whatever color. Just go ahead and give it a try. It's, it's a good way to practice dealing with, um, you know, paper of other colors. It's a good way to just... Have some fun, see how colors play together. Um, even white paper, just just have some fun with this. Get out some supplies. Um, we even had somebody what, that did the pair in like watercolor or or oil or water mix of oil, something like that. So um, doesn't have to be pastel, but it's a great way to kind of play along and learn with us. So now I'm obviously not going to bring that out to here. I've got my tape here. Um, I'm going to just kind of leave a little bit of a border edge for this so that um, it's not going right to the edge and making a mess. I'm trying to tuck it behind there. There we go. All right. All right. So let's get some pastels and get to 
working. Now, when we did this last time, what I said is the really the probably best thing to do is use a color that's either slightly lighter or slightly darker um, to get enough of an impression on there um, that it's going to, um, you're gonna be able to see your drawing, but not so much where you're really grinding it in because pastels will allow layering up to a point, but you don't want to really have, because some of the beauty of pastels to me when people use a toned ground is some of that pretty color showing through like that. I kind of like that electric look to it um, of that little bit of color showing through. So you don't want to have to really go over lines so much that you're really obliterating that color of the paper. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe, I don't know whether a cream or an orange, maybe we'll just do an orange. Let's see how this works on the, uh, I think that, can you see that on there? Yeah, I think we're going to do that. That's close enough. But I think you can see it on the, on there. We're, we're just going to go with that. So, so what we're wanting to do is get that kind of outline of that one tomato on there. Kind of comes over there. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting some lines down. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. So, uh, determining this has got kind of our three little quadrants. Uh, I'm going to kind of do this, this, this to kind of position where that's at. Do a quick, I'm not worried about, does this look perfect right now? I'm just worried about making sure it's on there. And I can see for this that I've got that a little closer. So, uh, but I like where it's at on the page. So I'm going to move this out some. This is our kind of walls of that tomato. And again, we're not, we're, we don't care if this looks absolutely perfect, realistic. We're, we're doing this to practice, to have fun. Everything does not need to be a finished drawing. Okay. All right. So I've got kind of an idea of where my walls and things are going to be in there. Now this one back here is darker. I'm just going to kind of, I don't want to put too much of this on there because it's a much darker value. So, and we're not going to probably get it the exact, with a, the, with pastels, you can only mix color so much, right? Um, that's why you always want to start out with this when, when you can afford to do pastels with as large of a set as possible to, um, to actually be working with. So... I don't want to use a lot of light down here because these are darker, but you can see that we're going to have to kind of struggle a little bit with, you know, a, a big set of a hundred or 200. It's going to have a whole bunch of oranges and reds versus, uh, you know, 32 has got to have all the colors. What can we do with the 32? So, and it's okay to be creative. We're doing this to, to just let loose and have some fun. So got this on here. So first I think what we're going to do is we're going to let me see if this is kind of a oh yeah that's a nice um i'm gonna take i've got the cream color i'm gonna tell you kind of what color i've got as i'm working i'm gonna break it i'm gonna slide this over just a touch there we go so they can see the edge of the thing a little bit better okay um i'm gonna break that in half so it's a little bit easier to use all right um i am going to come in here and find where i've got this little kind of tissue of the tomato that kind of holds all those little seeds in place. Just using the side to be able to kind of draw this in. See how it, it almost looks like the texture of the tomato itself. It's a nice, nice soft way of putting that in without it being too bold. Um, you know, some people might, what I, well, that kind of looks white, so I'll use white. It's not it's more of a cream and we don't want white on this. It's going to be super electric. So we do not want it to be that bold until we're kind of ready for the color. So just use that cream. If there's places you think you need to kind of push a little harder to make it a little more solid, that's fine. Kind of the walls of the tomato here, you can see that start going up into those. So I want to be cognizant of that's there. 
but I don't want it to be too hard, okay? Because obviously it turns kind of into that kind of soft uh, reddish pink of the tomato. And now I really want a tomato sandwich. <laughs> what? It looks good, doesn't it? Okay. Just kind of... Okay. So we've got that kind of in. Back here it's much softer. Instead of this, uh, this little color, I'm going to actually take more of kind of this, um, the next ochre that's up. Got the set. That was the one I was just using, that cream. Now I'm going to take the ochre that was next to it, which is a lighter one. Let's see if this will stay on the shelf. E no, not really. Afraid that'll fall off. So I'll just pick up the thing and, and show you guys. Break it in half again. It's okay. Okay. So since this is a darker value, that's why we're going with this kind of darker ochre in here. And I'm not pushing very hard. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of that color on. You can see some little pops of it back there. And that's about all I can see of that actually. So see how that's a darker value already? Okay. Put that little piece back in there. Now we are going to um, work on kind of this, it's been sliced kind of that wall of the tomato, okay? So we've got a red, we've got oranges, we've got a magenta, um, but it's still a little bit kind of creamier. So I'm gonna take that darkest orange. Let me see how that, yes gonna break it in half just because I like using these smaller pieces very lightly because we're gonna come back over it with another color okay we don't want to grind this in too hard we're just getting that lighter color from the red and then we'll come back in kind of start making where you've got these little kind of pleated areas inside from the slice kind of start Differentiating those comes kind of okay. So that is going to be too bright for this back here. So I'm going to actually take that red, the next color that's kind of the one true really red of the group. I'm going to break that. I'm going to use that. It's this one here, guys, where it goes kind of from that dark orange to this red and then the magenta. I'm going to take that and do my tomato in the background. We just kind of want to ghost that color in. You can just barely see it there. You can see that this is actually the edge where the body of the tomato drops away. This is the sliced part where this is actually the half. This is the skin on the outside. So we want to make sure that we don't overextend that down beyond where it's really at because it's going to look lopsided and weird to the viewer. Okay. All right. So, and I'm kind of ignoring this other one back over here. I think I'm just going to take my red. We're not really going to make that important. We're just going to kind of make that solid so it just reads as a solid. We might add a few highlights in a little bit, but we're not going to really care so much about that. All right, so this is obviously lighter than the paper. It's got a little bit kind of, of some magenta -y rose in it compared to that paper. So now we're going to need to start going a little bit darker than the paper. So I've got the kind of burnt sienna from there down at the end. It's kind of a reddish brown there. Um, I'm gonna keep that one whole because I'm gonna start kind of drawing in these areas that are slightly darker 
just so I can kind of start figuring out where they're going to be. Right along that edge, it'll help kind of, it, it's a different color and it's going to not show up super great on the red, but it's starting to help us kind of firm up our drawing and where that's going to be. And then we will use some darker, maybe kind of, oh no, you can see it on there. Oh good. Okay. Okay, go around the whole, the whole thing. Remember to look back and forth as you're working on this, right? Because we want to get the right shape. We're not drawing what we think we see or what we know. We're drawing what we are actually seeing with our eyes. So that's how we're going to make this read as a tomato to somebody who doesn't see our artwork or our, you know, picture reference that we're using. And this picture, came, this came off Pixabay. So it's the, a free use website, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. Um, it's where we get a lot of our reference photos because there's just so many, you pick a topic and you, there's something there. So I'm not going to really play into that as much because that's lighter coming down. Um, but you can see that starting, that kind of liquidy, part starting to form uh, going down. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this back here along the outside edge of that tomato. Maybe just kind of put a little bit in there of the color. That'll help that kind of read as something, but it doesn't really stand out, so it's going to fall back. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use that for that edge of the tomato and the skin down below it just a little. We're kind of getting that little bit of cast highlight there. We're not worried about whether it's perfect or not. Just down there. That's, it's not, it's very pale. Um, it's a very close to the same value as that red we just put on. So we're not, I don't feel like we're going to be able to do a lot to kind of pull those walls out right now with this. We're going to need to go slightly darker. So let's take the set. We're going to look along here. Let me see what this looks like on here. Mm, I kind of like that. All right, we'll use that in a minute. <laughs> Not yet. Okay, so right by this little sky blue, there is a brown. It's kind of an umber. We're going to come in with a corner. I'm not breaking it. And we're going to do that same thing that we kind of did with this back tomato here. I'm going to kind of color some of that in up to that. Katie, if we have questions, just holler. I know we've got Amanda and Frida on there and they've uh, kind of dealt with this episode already. So they probably know most of the questions, but if anything comes up, just Somebody was asking holler. if there are colored sanded papers like that. Um, you usually have to do your own. Um, I think, um, what is it, Art Spectrum makes sets of the sanded colored paper. Um, but they're weird colors, A. Um, I, I've bought them before thinking, oh my gosh, this is gonna be great. It's sanded paper. And then it's a bunch of really weird colors I don't know if I would ever use. So, um, and sanded paper is so much more expensive. Doing this outline around this just to kind of pull that out then um, the sanded paper is so much more expensive than just this regular kind of paper that I don't think I would go that route for learning with um, to buy like a whole pack of it. I would try a couple colors only um, or really look at the paper packs. One, like a neutral one that's got more like natural colors probably would be fine. But like some of the ones like where it's got like those weird Delft blues, like the Williamsburg blue and stuff like that. Not a lot of things always that you're going to want to use with that. So um, so they have them, but it's it's pretty substantial. I think the, the um, set that I got was like, I don't remember if it was 8 by 10. It was something the equivalent because the pastel papers are a little bit different in size. But it was like 45 bucks for, I don't even know, 8 sheets, 10 sheets, something like that. 
Uh, you can take something like the U Art paper that's a natural kind of beach sand color and you can tape it down and you can actually do color washes uh, with acrylic inks, with watercolor, with any sort of water media and make your own color ground and then once it's dry use it from there. So um, that may be a way to get a better kind of custom color for what you're you might want than buying, you know, right off the bat, uh, a specific, um, you know, pack of tinted ones. If that makes any sense at all. I'm like doing something and trying to talk at the same time and <laughs> feel like I'm a little... Okay, so putting just a tiny edge along there to kind of make that pop. Coming back to this. Now I'm really getting these kind of pleated areas because that's kind of how we know that in our head for what a tomato is when we've cut it. It's that kind of weird shape that we don't think about but that we immediately identify. Uh, the same as with like colored, you know, peppers, green peppers and things like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and where it's dark and I don't have any seeds, I'm going to go ahead and and color that area in. Um, okay, so see how that's starting to get kind of darker? That's really, it makes that red really electric against that color. All right, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come over here in just a couple spots that has slightly darker areas and I'm just going to hit some of those, okay? Not a lot, just a little in some of those areas. on this side than the other ones seem to. All right, see how we're starting to get some depth there? And don't worry, everybody, some people talked to me kind of after the last show and that they felt like it really goes through some ugly patches and you want to start putting, you just stop and put it away. Don't, because this is kind of where right after this is where it starts getting good. Um, take that next ochre over that's kind of by, there's like more of a beigey, uh, beigey pink looking one. Go ahead and grab that. You don't have to break that. We're gonna start putting seeds in. That's a nice darker value, just lightly, okay? Kind of just get what little bit of shape you can kind of see. Or start kind of, you don't have to push it down hard. Just give it a quick kind of rub in the general shape of that tomato seed. And some of them are going to be kind of suspended out in the kind of that little jelly goo that they've got on them out here where you're going to see some red around them. Okay. That's fine. Don't worry about that. We can kind of come back and tuck just a few lines around it. They don't have to be super dark and we're just suggesting it right now. A lot of pastel is the kind of the beautiful nuance of pastel is the suggestion. Okay, see how that's starting to look a lot more like our tomato there? All right, and these are soft, they, they're deeper. So you're just kind of seeing that little bit of an edge coming off. This one actually has some coloration kind of around that edge. 
where they're not as distinctly split. So just kind of give it a Now our seeds further back actually are pretty close to this. We're going to lighten these some so we can go ahead and take that same one. Do not push very hard. Just kind of ghost it right in there. that kind of falls away if you squint it's starting to look more like the values right okay so we're going to come back over here we've got icky hands and i did not put any paper towels up here that's okay all right um let's take this and make this slightly lighter now okay thank you katie is a godsend some of this too my throat's getting scratchy Thank you. All right. Um, so we did this with that orange. Let's come back. It's going to sound weird. We're going to come back with that little bit of kind of the second color over. Okay. One, two, three on the top. Little piece where we kind of broke it and put it outside. We're going to lightly ghost it over that orange. Okay. Really pay attention to these areas right here only. We put this further out, spread it further out. We're only getting these lighter highlights right now with that, okay? We need to bring that value up. I'm gonna draw kind of an edge so I can see where I'm going here. This is just like right in my reading glasses area, so I need to kind of leave myself some notes. For what I'm doing. That actually was a good timing because somebody just asked if um, light should be applied first or after. Or... Pastels, uh, you can kind of do either or, but pastels really work better dark to light, I think. Um, because if you, you're layering very lightly, um, and then you can do like a couple tweaks of your, you know, darkest darks or whatever in places. It's not good to be full coverage darks over that, um, especially because the dust falls down, right? So if you're putting your lights on first and then your darks, that dark dust can fall onto the lighter portions potentially and give you some issues. All right, now see if you squint, those values are getting a lot better, aren't they? Um, now the one back here, I think this, no, this wasn't the one that we, yeah, maybe it was, hold on. I'm gonna turn this, this side's really red. It's really orange from that. So I'm gonna turn it to the other side that's clean and I'm gonna come back in here and just give it a little bit of a brightening. in just a couple spots that I want to lighten up to kind of bring that tissue to those little seeds. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to kind of get that a little bit lighter. This button back here is just a little bit lighter. Okay. Now we've got that red there. So what we're going to do with that is we're gonna go to that orange that we used first that's right by the red. I'm gonna get half of that. 
we're gonna take that and make that our lighter area here very gently, okay? To make it kind of that tissue that we just lightened there, but because it's further back, it's gonna be a darker value. See how that's lightening it slightly with color. It's not as it's a very mild value step up, but because it's still darker, it pushes that back, right? I hope that my screen is the only one that this looks really electric on. <laughs> that it's that it's just it looks very like it's vibrating. Um, I'm going to take a little bit and put it kind of right, right in that area there. Okay, now we're going to come back to this one. Um, we're going to, I'm going to try this kind of magenta -y purple that's here. We're going to take that and I'm going to edge along these pleat, pleated areas. You're barely going to be able to see it. It's going to be more the color pop for the inside here that comes up to that light part. Just that's going to subconsciously help the viewer read this. I'm not gonna put it everywhere. Put it there. Edge it right there. And right here. Okay. Um hold on, let's see. Don't do as I do real quick. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do just around this, right back here, guys. Just to kind of pop that color out, just that little bit. And the same with right, right along here. Okay. All right. So that's what, what time, how were you doing on time, Katie? You're about 20 minutes. Okay. All right. So let's start working on um, maybe getting some darker darks in and around this. We, we used that kind of burnt umbery looking color, maybe more of a raw umber. We're going to use the one next to it that's super dark. Okay. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to use black in this. This is a nice dark. Oh yeah. That's a nice dark dark. Okay, so anywhere that we've got some dark darks, we don't want to outline everything. I'm going to be very light. Um, I'm, I'm using the corner to it. Not pushing super hard, unless I want it to be a lot more exaggerated. Right there, it's got kind of a cool hole, so we're going to exaggerate that a little bit. very lightly tracing just a little line I don't want it to be kind of going right along that violet that I put in there kind of tracing around a few parts of the seeds. Not all of them. Anywhere there's a seed that has kind of a little bit more defined shadow. Just putting that against it because see how that little bit of dark kind of makes it stand out slightly more.
small amounts, light pressure. So you're just putting a little bit of color on. You don't have to make it hard lines, okay? We're just doing a little bit of coloring with it. Think of it as this is a stick and you're applying eyeshadow. You would not mash this down on your eye, right? You would very lightly put slight amount of pressure, just enough to get that color to come off. That's about how, how hard I'm pushing down on this. We want this to be very light. We only want a little bit of that color to come off. See how that's starting to give some depth to that? All right, I'm gonna come over here to this one in the back and we're going to put a little bit more pressure since this is a lot darker, right? And we're gonna put this in some of these spots. Especially around these seeds, okay? We're not gonna make them as, we're gonna make these lighter as we go. We're gonna kind of build those up. This is definitely harder. I'm not pushing super hard, but I'm not doing where, where if this was, you know, pretending this is an eye and pushing, pushing down. You wanna hear kind of that scrapey scrape? That's how you know you're pushing enough. Can you mention one more time where you got the reference photo for Lisa? Yes, pixabay.com has reference photos. You, I think you do have to sign up for an account to, to download them um, up to a certain um, resolution. And then you do have to pay, like if you're doing like super high resolution, but for anything that you would need to do for a photo reference to print out um, on your computer printer or uh, use on your iPad or, you know, something like that. It's, it's free. And my advice is always go to the photographs because if you don't distinguish what exactly you want, you will get like vectors and things that are illustrations and things that, um, that you're looking for. I'm going to go just a little edge just from here up. Um, you will get things that you may not want on your, uh, in your search and, and that'll take, you know, longer to do the search. So always put it under photos and then search for the item. Okay. See so yeah, how that's starting to kind of push that back. Um, this one has a lot of that in it, doesn't it? I'm going to take this on its side and I'm just going to suggest some of the dark in there. And then I'm going to give myself an edge. Just so it makes that fall back. It reads as probably just another tomato. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of that, um, darkest kind of ochre and put a little bit right here. See, so that kind of reads as a tomato, but we don't have to worry about it being there. Okay. Now here is where I think I'm going to use just a little bit of a so number three stomp. I just want this to kind of I don't want this to be as hard kind of colored. I just want it to kind of blend into nothing right here. See that took it and it softened it. 
kind of, oops, wrong color. I was kind of getting a, a weird thing going on. So that's a way to kind of get rid of that. And then I can kind of tighten that line up without it being too much dust right there that it's going to give problems with. Okay. All right. So let's come back over here to... Let's really, this is much more kind of opaque looking here. So we did that with that kind of lighter color. I'm going to come back in. Let me see what this peach looks like. There's kind of a peach color. It's right by that lemon yellow in the set. So five over from the top. Break the peach. Didn't know you were going to be able to take out your aggressions from the being stuck at home okay i'm gonna push much harder with this okay we're not we know this this is going to be our this item here now it's going to be you know we've got our our drawing down so go ahead and push Okay, over here I can see kind of fingers of this so I'm going to draw that on with kind of just the rough side and kind of connect it a little bit to those seeds same here it kind of connects to those seeds Okay, so some of these seeds have a highlight on them. I'm going to turn this on its side. I'm going to hit them with a little harder highlight, of this lighter color. As long as I'm right here. Okay. All right. Same up in here. Actually, I'm going to wait on these. I'm going to bring this up here. We're going to hit them with a little brighter, maybe one of those yellows. I'm going to make that harder there. You can see as I'm pushing harder and this is kind of leaving more space, it's starting to look a little bit more defined. Okay, now since this kind of blends into those, I'm going to take it in so lightly. Just pull a little bit of that color. See how up in here it gets lighter? I'm going to take that peach and so carefully. See how there's that little bit of highlight in there? Softer there. All right. So there we've got that a little bit right there. And with that, I'm kind of ghosting just enough on to leave that texture. And then I can smooth that out if I want that to be. Let me get another one of these to be smoother. Just with a quick kind of pull across it and soften it. Okay. All right. Let's get um, kind of the sunshiny yellow next to the lemon. Just hit these seeds just a little in the right spot where you see it look a little bit bolder. Hit it with that yellow. Not all of them have it, so don't go hog wild. You don't, you're not recoloring the seed. Just give it just a pop. Of some color. Over here there's just a little bit. I'm putting it on its side and barely pushing. 
barely pushing, just leaving a little, to have a little bit of color. Okay, now this is a little too flat, so we're gonna take, uh, let's see how much lighter this might be. We're gonna take down at this farthest end, there's almost like a raw sienna color. Pop that bad boy in half. We're going to come back here and, and lighten. Okay, now that we've gotten a little edge right along here, gonna hit. now that we've gotten that, I'm going to take the, um, let's see the darkest ochre, oh, yep, no, that's not going to look good, uh, take the lighter ochre three over, and we're going to just, in a few spots, give it that little bit. Don't want it to be everywhere, just a little bit, kind of pull that. Turn it on its side, be very, if you're using a side of it, make sure before you use it, you see what's under there that was get, starting to get really orange, so I flipped it. Just kind of brightening this little bit right in here. Okay, see how that looks like this is closer than that is closer and how this is done? Okay, so uh, how much more time do we have, Katie? About seven minutes. Okay, so the one thing I don't like that I'm seeing here is I like how much more depth this has than this. I did not know kind of what I was wanting to do here quite yet. So I'm going to go back and take that, um, was it the sienna or this umber? I think it was this umber. Yes. I'm going to go back and take the one that's on the bottom, four over from the right. It's kind of a, almost like a raw umber. I'm actually going to take it and break it. I've been using it to draw. Actually, you know what? No. Stop the press. We're not going to use that one. Well, I just noticed that there's this nice olive, right? Cool. So it's a compliment, but it's kind of still a dusty green, right? So we're gonna take that, break that. Ooh. I'm gonna, oh yeah, because look, that's a little bit lighter. Just to kind of Have some contrast in here. I actually really like that. I'm gonna bring that around in here. It shows up lighter on this red than you would expect. So anywhere kind of in this area where there's some lighter, I'm gonna come back in. The ooey gooey part. Yes just above kind of that violet those two play really nicely together it looks like makes that violet pop okay the ooey gooey parts that is a technical term i think katie that's mm -hmm. gonna be the technical term of the week it's the ooey gooey, that's right? the ooey -gooey part. what are you painting ooey gooey parts i like that okay all right. Just putting a little bit, that's a nice play between that and the red and kind of these spots that still had some open red in them. Like that, okay. Okay, don't do as Amy does. Look away, look away! Okay. All right. 
So, what do I want to do with the few minutes we got left? Put a little bit of that green right here. I know it's not green, but I, I think that's a really nice little contrast. Um, I don't really think there's anywhere in that one that could use that little bit of, I kind of like keeping that up here. I think just to make this a little better transition, I'm going to get that kind of orange back out that we started with. Actually, I think I'm going to go the next, let's see if the next orange up is too. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't do this yet. That actually works, I think. Okay. So, just want, didn't want anybody else to be like, ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over. So, right, two, two to the left of that brightest red. I'm going to pull that out. Just trying to kind of, I, I, I'm using it on its side. For the whole with the whole piece because I don't want to break it because I would probably draw with this later um, just kind of using it almost to kind of smooth the colors together okay we can come back and put the little bit littlest bit of light back on it if we need to just trying to get kind of that edge carved where it kind of the pleats dump down I'm going right along that violet I used just trying to harden up see how that little bit hardens up that edge winners it's about that time isn't it all right all right so right there right there all right so with a very limited little 32 piece set, we just did something that's almost, you know, not really much, it's a very analogous color scheme and we took a lot of other colors and really kind of played yeah, I love that magenta pop. with it. Yeah, I do too, and the green too. It looks really nice. Okay, so you can look at this and you can tell it's tomatoes. Could you continue to go from here and really finish it out, yes. Um, with the addition of some um, like softer soft pastels to put those finishing touches on help, yes, it might. But I, I, I'm actually pretty pleased with, with how this turned out as a whole. It's a pretty nice little, um, I, lo I love the colors. I'm just doing this to kind of give it that final. And this is with that little kind of lightest color. Okay, I'm gonna do what I said I was not gonna do, and I'm gonna take the white and put just a little bit right here. Just in a couple places. Just for that lightest little. It's actually easier for me to look on the screen because I can see the values a little better. All right. I'm going to call it good. I mean, I'm going to call it happy with it. That's a we really weird, really difficult subject, and we just knocked it out of the park. I'm, I hope everybody tried it. I hope everybody didn't get too frustrated. This is okay. It's okay to try something really weird. And unusual and maybe a little frustrating because you know what that's how you learn and, and I, I try to encourage people over and over to it doesn't always have to be a finished artwork the ones that aren't are the ones that you learn the most from stuff like this really helps you learn your colors uh, swatching it on different color paper does too but this helps you really learn how those colors play nicely together especially with a ground like the red that we did so if anybody did any other colored grounds and they want to share it, Jerry's live Facebook group, please, 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 please. That would be awesome. Um, if you're not a member, not sure why not, 
Uh, you only have to have what a um, a Facebook membership, right, Katie? But it doesn't. You don't ever have to post anything. Just you do have to do that to get in the groups. Mm -hmm. You go to groups on Facebook. You type in Jerry's Live. You do have to answer the question, and then they will approve you to the group. Lots of people share awesome stuff. That's where we post finished projects that we do. I will take a picture of this um, and post it with the reference photo in there by tomorrow. Uh, probably around lunchtime because I'll be in here for a meeting. So um, so that will be in there if you'd like to give it a try, um, especially if you caught us a little bit late. So uh, knock yourself out and, and show us what you did with another color ground. I'd be really excited to see that. So. Uh, the Kindness Rocks contest. Was this the last of the contests? The last one. That was the last one for right now. So, um, you guys did some really awesome ones. And, of course, I don't get to pick because if I, if I did... <laughs> the one of Amy is the one that I would want to win. I do not know who did this, but they are really I'm absolutely awesome. Away. Is it? Heidi Mertz. Of Supply North Carolina. Thank you for brightening our day. The staff got an incredible kick out of it and so did I. I think that that's and the brush that just made it so that's really cool. Thank you for that really fun. I mean that's what this is about right? Kindness rocks. That was cool. All right so um, number three for a the third place winner for a hundred dollar e gift card Donna Richard of Matari, Louisiana with this little cat. Um, it says adopt a rock and there's a little tiny paw print and then there's a little cat to be adopted in the garden, which that was kind of what this is all about. Stuff that you put out and that people find and it brings a little joy to somebody's life. So that was a $100 e-gift card. Christine Shaw of Maplewood, New Jersey. And these little penguins are fantastic. Look, he's even a little baby cry. He's so cute. Yeah. The little mom and dad and baby, and they've got their own igloo. So that would be delightful to come across. Christine, $250 e-gift card. Thank you so much for your entry. First place. This seemed to be to epitomize the, the challenge. The challenge completely and, and was very adorable. Joanne, it's Guarnio, I'm guessing. Sorry if I've butchered it. Of Ithaca, New York. Take one and smile. And there's all this little collection of, the frog is awesome here. Little fox, a little collection of all sorts of happy little little critters and symbols. Um, Joanne has a $500 e-gift card. So those are our winners. Thank you guys so much for your entries. And, and really, this was, the, I think this was the most fun one. And so many people did some really like beautiful ones and cute ones. Oh, and just, I, get so many gift cards I know, I know. We were, we, great ones. there was like, fighting about, about what, what, we, what was going to happen with it. So um, thank you guys, everybody, for playing. That was It was very cheerful. And I really do hope you go put this somewhere for people to find. I think that that would be a really cool thing. So uh, again, if you want to see what any of these supplies were, if you want to buy the kit, it's $20 with all the stuff and 12 pieces of, of paper in there so that you can do 12 artworks. And this is the one that I've used for all of these different episodes. It's still the same box. Those are tiny sticks, yes, but look how much mileage I've gotten out of them. So um, these will last you for those 12 pieces of paper, guys. Uh, keyword is JL153. I'll pull up all the supplies on our website. So next week we have Jeff Olson from Talons um, of the United States. Royal Talons. Royal, that's right. I always forget. They don't want to put that on there. Okay. So yes, Royal Talons. Um, he is the art educator for the company, and it's the North American branch. They are going to do a really awesome social distanced Zoom style episode uh, where he is going to teach us how to do mixed media art using Rembrandt watercolors and pastels, soft pastels. And they're gonna be using black watercolor paper. All the colors pop. It's absolutely stunning stuff. So you guys really wanna tune in and see that episode uh, with us next week. So thank you guys for tuning in. Take care of yourselves and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye.